What's up everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna show you my approach to creating custom cut and sew garments, everything from creating the mock itself, making it look as realistic as possible to how I create seamless patterns that work really well with cut and sew garments to finding the right imagery and everything in between. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of tips and tricks along the way. Let's go. What's up everyone? So first of all, thank you so much to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribed. It means so much that you watch this video, so thank you. In today's tutorial, we're gonna focus less on the filters and effects in Photoshop and a little bit more on the mock-up process. Specifically, I'm gonna show you how I approach custom cut and sew garments. So this can be anything from custom hoodies to jackets to you know sweat suits, sweatpants, shorts, whatever it might be. You can apply what I show you in this video to whatever sort of custom garment you want to create. So just an FYI, I'm not going to get into the illustrator side in terms of like creating tech packs or things like that. I'm going to save that for another video. This is going to be more about just conceptualizing the product itself trying to make it look as realistic as possible in Photoshop so that your manufacturer can get an idea of what it is you're trying to achieve. This can also just be a fun, like creative exercise. There are dedicated Instagrams that are literally just like conceptual products that never get made, but can draw a lot of attention and get some hype and maybe like bolster your account. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Before we get too far along, today's video is brought to you by fullermo.com. Unless Adobe wants to cut me a check or Squarespace wants to cut me a check, I'd rather just promote my own company. Um, not only that, but I genuinely do feel like it's very useful for beginning designers, for just like design hobbyists, for seasoned professionals, um, and everyone in between. There's over 1,600 four and five star reviews for the website. If you don't already know, fullermo.com is essentially a collection of different design tools and presets, primarily for Photoshop. Um, there's different categories you can pick from, heavy metal, there's like 90s bootleg rap stuff, there's psychedelic sort of trippy presets, um, and lots of other stuff. So this is all you know stuff that I've made or I've collaborated with amazing designers um, on different design tools. And it's all stuff that we use. I've made videos showing how I've used the presets for Sweetie, Outcast, um, some of the textures I've used a lot for like Def Leppard, Iron Maiden, um, lots of different bands and artists. So if you wanna check it out and use the code YT25, that'll give you 25% off. And that includes the master bundle, which is literally everything I've ever made. It's over 500 uh, design tools and presets. So check that out. Um, now let's continue on with the video. All right, so first things first, this is the concept that I came up with for this custom cut and sew uh, garment. We're working with a viscose um, Cuban collar short sleeve button up shirt. I've seen a ton of brands do this. Thought it would be dope to, um, to do that for this tutorial. Um, yeah, it's based on the movie Belly. It, funny enough, it has nothing to do with um, this Supreme drop that happened. Um, a few months ago, someone actually DM me and was like Supreme vibes. And I was like, is it? And then, yeah, I maybe subconsciously saw this, but I just fucking love the movie belly. Like Hype Williams directed it. The visuals are amazing. Like literally every movie still looks incredible. Um, and if you don't know Hype Williams work, like iconic director, watch some of his music videos from the nineties, fucking incredibly talented um visionary uh person so yeah um i thought it would look dope as a custom shirt and so i just grabbed you know a movie still um with the iconic you know sort of like blue toned um imagery and uh threw it on a shirt and this is what we what i came up with um all of these panels in the shirt are separate so like i'll just show you like what the front layer breakdown 
looks like. There's, you know, right sleeve, left sleeve, collar, like all this stuff is separated. And that's super important when you're creating these kinds of mocks. Um, for one, it just looks more realistic. Um, and then two, I think it gives the manufacturer a better idea of what you're going for and how the garment, <clears throat> how the garment's gonna be constructed. All right, so let me show you how I created this mock-up, right? So I literally just searched viscose Cuban collar shirt and I narrowed it down by images that are larger than two megapixels. So there's, they're, they're really big. Um, and the way you can do that is in Google image search, just go to advanced search over here with that clicking the little gear icon and then under image size, just change it to larger than two megapixels. Cause that's going, going to just like quickly weed out any like smaller images. And, and with mockups, especially you want to use as high resolution um, photo as possible. So, Right away, like I saw some good options. I didn't want to use this because it was too dark. In hindsight, this probably would have worked best, but I want to do exactly what I did the first time, which is using this image. Um, 3000 by 3000 pixels, pretty big. Right click, copy image, back into Photoshop. Let's go to this top layer, Command V, and that's going to paste it in. And then um, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to convert to a smart object. It's really not necessary um but yeah i just sized it down a little bit um right away window properties let's get rid of the background we can just go to quick actions remove background click that um and you know you can see there's some remnants left over for my money with this this kind of mock-up where it's like pretty straight um lines i'll just use the uh the polygonal lasso tool click the masking layer um, so this box you know comes up we can see the layer mask and then i'll make sure the foreground color is black and i'll just make you know jesus a fucking motorcycle gang just drove by um i'll just kind of make a selection that's like just you know straight lines again foreground is black go to edit fill if you want to use shortcuts to do the fill that's all all good i never got the hang of the fill shortcut i just i don't know it's not a big deal to me to go to edit fill um but yeah that's basically just going to get rid of um you know the little remnants of the background that kind of stayed um stayed there when we removed it okay so it's looking pretty good already the bottom looks a little bit sketchy like the fact that it's curved is not bad because it looks more organic you know but i'm down to just have it like straight across so i'll just use the rectangular marquee tool get it you know so that there's as much of the original um garment showing as possible um but then i'll just again go to edit um fill and then it's just like kind of straight across right so i've seen plenty of mock-ups that look like that very very clean um, the next step that I would take is getting rid of this tag because, um, I don't know, it, <laughs> it's just going to give away to the fact that this is just like a Google image. Um, a fast way that you can do that is I'll just go to the clone stamp tool and if you hold down the option key, um, and I'll use a soft brush in this case because it is like fabric, so it is soft, right? So that makes sense. Um, you can just brush out like the tag and basically you just hold down the option key and you can click above it next to it. I like to go, you know, if I'm removing um, the top part of the tag, I'll click above it, right? And then just drag it across bottom, drag it across, click holding down again, the option key, drag it down over here, drag it down. And that's like going to create the most organic, um, um gonna create the most organic look for this right so when you zoom out it looks basically looks like there was never a tag there to begin with right so we've already made a ton of progress um it looks like a very clean mock-up if you were doing a fucking 
you know, brick red shirt right now, you'd be good to go, but we don't want it to be red, right? We're going, we're going to be adding imagery to it and all that stuff. So we're trying to get it to a place where it's like at the very least, like a super light gray. Um, so what I'm gonna do is right click on the layer and I'm going to convert to a smart object. I'm gonna get it out of that mask. It's not really necessary anymore. Let's change this to OG photo. And then I'm going to hit command U, bring up the hue and saturation box and I'm gonna change the saturation to negative 100 so it's now grayscale. Um, for my money, when I'm making these adjustments, like some people like to use you know, all this shit, they'll, they'll go to black and white and then, you know, that does the same thing. But then you end up with a bunch of extra layers, which just doesn't seem necessary to me. So I, I just use the hue and saturation in a smart object. That to me is, is easier. So just do whatever you think is easier. Um, so now that it's grayscale, I'll just go to image adjustments brightness and contrast you could use levels as well but this is what i like um make sure the use legacy box is checked here and then i'll just bring up the brightness bring up the contrast so it gets to a place where it's you know like i said sort of like a light gray leaning towards white you don't want to do it too much where you're losing the the outer edge and the other details but you know get it to like here right that feels pretty decent click OK, and then I'm going to do another um, image adjustments, brightness and contrast. And again, since it's a smart object, it's just adding the effects to this layer. I'm going to lower the contrast and that's basically going to smooth out some of the details and like maybe bump up the contrast a little bit, but it's already pretty close, right? So I'm good with that. Like, so we've gone from, you know, this Google image of this random brand's shirt. And by the way, the only reason I feel comfortable with grabbing a Google image is I'm not reselling this mock. I'm not gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not reselling this mock. I'm not gonna be making money off of it or anything like that. Um, shout out to this brand. You've got great product photos. <laughs> um, but yeah, whenever you're doing this kind of stuff, if, if it's just for fun, if you're not making money from it, to me, not a huge deal if you just use Google, but uh, you know, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, so hopefully that's not gonna come back and bite me in the ass. Um, but yeah, so looking at this, we, we literally could start adding images to this and just like overlay it over the whole thing, but I wanna show you like the way that I do it, which is like separating everything, like separating the sleeves, the collar, buttons, all that stuff. So. First thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this OG photo in case we need to go back to it. And then I'm just going to right click and I'm gonna to convert to smart object again. So now that we've got basically just this flat sort of smart object with no effects on it, we can start separating the different layers, the different panels, um, the different parts of this um, garment. So I'll just use the polygonal, polygonal lasso tool and just like, let's get rid of this, or let's, um, I'm sorry, separate this right sleeve. And whenever I say right, on the screen I'm talking about left, cause I'm talking about when you're actually wearing the garment. So it's like your left is your right, your right is your left. Same thing as, as like stage left, like they really mean like when you're on the right side of the stage facing the audience. Um, little uh, theatrical terminology for you. But yeah, we're just going to follow along with the stitching. You know, be as, again, precise as you want. With these tutorials, I go a little bit faster. So once we've got that selection made, I'll just hit Command J. And so now this sleeve is all on its own, right? Let's name it so there's no confusion, right sleeve. And then we'll just continue to do that for everything else, right? So left sleeve. Cutting along right up to the stitching. Again, be as precise or not as precise as you as you want. If you're in a time crunch, whatever the case may be, um, that pretty much will get the job done. Command J, and there we've got our left sleeve, right? So I'm gonna now do this 
for the collar, um, this um, right panel, and uh, we don't have to do it for the left panel because that'll technically just be the base of the shirt. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna speed this part up so you guys don't, I think you guys get it by now. So yeah, I'll be right back. All right, so we've got our panels separated, we've got the sleeves separated, the collar, all that good stuff. Um, and as you'll see, this layer that used to be called OG Photo is now called Left Panel because while it is, you know, the entire shirt, with all these layers on top, um, it actually becomes just that side, see? Because everything else is, is covering it, right? So from here, I'm actually going to separate the buttons as well. And because this is using a, a tool other than the polygonal lasso tool, I'll just show you how I do it. Um, I just use the elliptical marquee tool and I'll just go in here and um, try to get it, you know, pretty close, right? And make sure this second box at the top is selected, add to selection. Otherwise, if you don't have it selected, you have you know, maybe this first box, that's just going to create a new selection and get rid of the original one. And that's not what we want. So make sure the second box is checked. Just getting it, you know, close. When you're zoomed out, it's just gonna look like a circle, you know, that's a different color. And we're gonna fix that in a second, so don't worry about it. And then I'm on the um, left panel layer command J that's gonna pop all the buttons up and then I'll just move that to the top buttons and so now you know if you change the color of these buttons you want them to be I don't know let's say you want some you want some light pink buttons just change the blending mode to multiply and then we'll fix this here just gonna cut that out so there you go, now you got some cool pink buttons for your white shirt. Um, you know, maybe you're gonna wear this to Valentine's Day, whatever the case is. Um, but yeah, so now we're gonna be able to change those to suit whatever um, the vibe is for the rest of the shirt, right? Which is super important. So from here, we can start adding some imagery to these panels because, um, you know, we're trying to get, we're basically, tr this is gonna be the result, right? So. Let's get the photo from good old Google. Um, let's see, uh, here's the one that we used. This was as big as a photo I could find of this particular scene. I just liked it because there was sort of a sense of symmetry already with like the walls being like sort of the grid, um, but then like some asymmetry with the woman laying here talking on the phone, thought that was dope. Um, so yeah, right click copy image, go back over here and we'll start with the uh, left panel. And I'm actually gonna move the panels next to each other so they're easier to work with. Left panel, command um, V is going to paste in that photo. And then I'm going to right click and go create clipping mask. Not only that, but I'm going to go to the blend mode and change it to multiply. And I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit which is just gonna make, it's gonna bring out the shadows in the original garment and just make it look a little bit more realistic. So then we can size that up. You know, I try not to size it up too much past the original garment, but I do want it to be over the, the whole thing. Just move it over. I'm holding down shift so that moves it in a, in a straight line, All right? Okay, so that feels pretty good there. Um, the the image is not really gonna move a ton. So I can just duplicate it, Command J, and let's just make this um, belly image, okay? I'm just going to hit Command J and then move it up above this right panel layer and then do the same thing, right click, create clipping mask. And so now you've got it, um, you know, sort of, it's looking sort of symmetrical already, but it looks like we're gonna need to bump it over a little bit. So I'm holding down um, command 
and clicking this other layer and that's gonna select them both. I'm just gonna bump it over because I want like this box to basically be like in the center of the shirt, right? And I can probably, yeah, move it down a little bit as well. You don't wanna move it down too much. Otherwise, you can either make it bigger if you want this, this, um, this box to be bigger, but I kinda like the way it's looking now. Okay. All right, so now we've got, you know, the main part of the, um, the garment is, um, is sort of done, you know. What I did is to make this look a little bit more interesting to me, um, let's create a smart object out of this in case we wanna go back, but I'll just do Command I, and that just inverts the image, and then I'll do Command U, bring up hue and saturation, and if you go down to negative 180, that's basically going to bring back in the blues um, and the teals because it is on the color spectrum, literally the opposite of um, orange, right? Does that make sense? Sometimes this shit is like hard to explain, but I think you understand it. Um, so this is already looking pretty dope. The thing that's kind of a bummer is like this photo is not super, super high res. Um, so, you know, while there might be some tricks that the manuf manufacturer can do to make this go away, um, for the time being, there's not a ton that we can do, but I think as long as like the general vibe is there, um, it's fine, you know what I mean? So from here, we can start adding this same image to the sleeves, right? And the collar and all that stuff. So I'll go back to the original belly image, Command J, go up to right above the left sleeve, right click, create clipping mask. And you could totally leave it like this, but I'm thinking about when this is actually gonna be manufactured. Um, it's not gonna be perfectly straight across, right? It's gonna be like probably, it's gonna be a little bit off. And so to make it look more realistic, I'll hold down shift, use the arrow keys and just like bump it down a little bit. Maybe, maybe not even hold down the shift key to be honest, cause it's like a matter of just like a few pixels and just bump it a little bit. So it just looks a little bit more organic, right? And then we're gonna hit Command J, um, which is going to duplicate this image. Again, go above the right sleeve, right click, create clipping mask. And it's already, it's already been shifted down a little bit from the original image, so we don't need to do that again. The only thing weird I'm seeing now is that um, on this sleeve, it's hitting this different part of the image that's, it just looks weird, see? And so I'm going to just sort of elongate the image, stretch it a bit so that we still have that grid going, but we don't see like that um, sort of darker part of the image that like doesn't go with the rest of it. Um, the last part now is gonna be the collar on the front here. And so we're gonna go back to the OG, you know, image, Command J, go right above the collar, right click, create clipping mask. And I don't want the collar to go with the grid. I want to use the blue, cause I think that'll look just like cooler. But I wanna like incorporate maybe a little bit of the image. Kind of the fur from the rug looks dope um, to me. And so I'll probably leave it just like that. And you know, when you're manufacturing custom garments and you're working with a supplier, the, the mocking process is super important because you can literally call out like, hey, you know, on the collar, I wanna make sure this segment of the image is being used um, or the sleeves or, or anything for that matter, right? Um, the buttons, I think we can change to, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna make it maybe like navy, right? And I'm just like using the eyedropper to pick out a nice navy from the original image. A little bit lighter. Yeah, that should be cool. Okay, so here we can see that this is now a problem. This is the bottom of the image. So all we have to do is just like bump that image down a bit and that'll get rid of that and still looks fine. Okay, so I mean from here, you could do a few things if you if you weren't happy with um, 
you know, the shadows and highlights. You could go down to the OG photo, you could bring it to the very top, and um, you know, you could do multiply and you could increase the contrast. Let's make it, oh, it's already a smart object, okay. So you could increase the brightness and contrast or something, you know, if you wanted it to look a little bit more grimy, like um, bring out more of those shadows or whatever. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about is this inside um, area. Right now it's just like white, which is fine, I guess, but I think if you wanted to add that extra level of sort of realism, you could just hit Command J on this original image, go up above the inside um, layer, right click, create clipping mask, and I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. Um, but not too much. Maybe stretch it a tiny bit, yeah. I basically just didn't want like this um, screen showing here. I just wanted it to be kind of the grids. But yeah, from here, I'll just like lower the opacity of it so that it looks like it's the back of the shirt kind of showing through, you know what I mean? And so, you know, that's just like an extra little, just an extra little thing that makes it look a little bit more realistic, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that sort of covers like whenever I'm using like some, some um, photographic elements or something like that and uh, creating this, this style of garment. So the front is basically done. I'm not gonna show how to create this whole back because it's literally the exact same process as the front. If you can follow what I just did for the front, you can do the back. It's just a matter of finding the right image. Um, in this case, I just went back to that brand's website, found the product image for this shirt, found the back. It was a little bit small, had to size it up a bit. I don't love that there was this line here, like the the paneling was a little bit different than I would want. I would want this to just be, um, this to be a panel and this to be a, a separate panel. So I think if this were like a real mock that I was like sending to a manufacturer, I would probably like erase that out or something and fix it, but whatever. You, I, th I think you get the point. If you can follow the front, you can figure out the back. All right, so from here, let's group all of this together. And I'm just holding down shift, grabbing the bottom layer to the top layer. That's gonna select all the layers. Command G is going to put it in a group. And um, I'm going to duplicate the group because now I'm gonna show how you can add um, a seamless pattern to these panels. First thing I'm gonna do is go to File, New, and I will typically make um, my seamless patterns if they're for like um, garments, like shirts or hoodies or whatever. I'll just go 12 by 12. So I'm just gonna make this 12 inches, height 12 inches, resolution 300 DPI, background contents, let's change to white, click create. And this is where things can get a little bit tricky because you might need to literally measure out um, how big you want certain elements to be on your shirt. So, or hoodie or whatever the case may be. So like, that's when the dimensions of the pattern become more important. Um, you know, and your manufacturer is gonna be able to help out with that sort of thing. But I'll show you the pattern that I um, ended up creating, right? So I created this using the hand-drawn horror elements kit from fullermo.com. Um, and it just basically, yeah, allowed me to grab some different elements, create, you know, a unique seamless pattern. And um, I'll show you exactly how I did that. So here is the original pattern that I started making, right? And so basically, you know, I just opened up this um, master bundle, over 500 tools and presets for Photoshop, no big deal. Um, and I went to the uh, hand-drawn horror elements and then went to the PNG folder and the main elements. And they don't look great on preview um, because they're on darker backgrounds and they're really meant for like lighter garments unless you inverted them. Um, but yeah, I just went through and I was like, all right, what would be dope as, man, this really looks like shit on the preview, but <laughs> it's so annoying. You're gonna see in a second that it, you know, obviously doesn't look this way in Photoshop. 
Um, but yeah, I think I, yeah, I saw this one and I was like, all right, that'd be dope. Bring that in. Command A, grab the whole canvas. Command C, copy it. And then um, just started pasting in stuff. Right click, convert to smart object so we can size it up and down without losing a bunch of resolution. And I just started, you know, placing these elements in here one at a time. You know, then I grabbed this skeleton, I grabbed some cobweb, grabbed the fire, all that, and just sort of tried to start getting um, just like a cool sort of a vibe going. In, in my case, I thought it would be cool just to use like the flames and the black um, imagery. I thought that would make a good, um, you know, kind of shirt. So from here, once I got it to this point where I was like feeling like I was using the right imagery and all that, um, I, I um, duplicated this layer and I right clicked and I did merge group, okay? And so now here's where the dimensions are important. I went up to image, image size, and I looked at the pixels. And in this case, 12 inches equals 3,600 pixels, okay? And so when you're creating a seamless pattern, you have to divide this number by two. So once you have that number figured out, so in this case, it's 3,600 by 3,600. You can go up to filter, other, offset, okay? And that's going to, and you wanna make sure wraparound is selected. And then when you change the horizontal and vertical pixels, you change it to half the amount of the image size. So like horizontal, we go 1,800 because 1,800 times two is 3,600, right? Vertical, same thing, 1800. So now this is a seamless pattern. Like this can go as many times to the left or right, up and down, whatever, and it'll be seamless the whole time. So then we can just click OK. And so now we've got our pattern. And what I like to do is then just start sort of shifting some stuff around. So it's not so obviously like in a, in a, um, whoops, in like four squares. Right? So once you start moving things over, it makes the pattern become more organic. And that's when I, um, you know, added in these other elements as well. So like, I'll just click this off. Um, you know, I added in the bat, added in this other bat, added in this little sort of devil mask face thing. And that made it for, made for, you know, just like a cool pattern that again is still seamless because these are not going to the edge. Um, and the edge is where the seamless aspect of the pattern comes into play because, you know, the, the left side of this skeleton is missing, right? But it's not, it's right there. And the legs are missing here. No, they're not. They're right here and they're right here. That's what makes a pattern seamless. So from here, I can just go to edit, define pattern, and then let's just name it, um, you know, horror pattern click OK. And now we can go back to our original garment. Let's get rid of this, you know, the belly imagery that we were using. So it's just back to the white or light gray, you know, panels. And um, I'm going to turn off the color overlay on the buttons as well. So we're kind of back to square one. So now if we right click on, let's say this right panel, double click on it and go to pattern overlay, we can select this horror pattern, right? And it's gonna be seamless. So if you change the scale to 10, it's gonna be really tiny, uh, really tiny, you know, elements. Maybe that's what you want. You can go to 25, you know, a little bit bigger, go to 50, right? So you can go all the way up to what, you know, if you wanna be a, a psychopath idiot, you can do something like that, that looks horrible. But I just stuck with 50, cause I thought it'd be cool to like, have it be a seamless pattern, but not have a ton of repetition in the elements. So, you know what I mean? Like if it was at 25, you'd see the same element like more than once, maybe like three times, depending on where um, the fabric sort of lays when they create this, this garment. Um, so at 50, I think there's just a better chance of like not repeating um, the same element more than once, you know what I mean? So we can just click okay then. We've got the pattern. 
um, going on this on this right panel. We can then click the um, the left panel, do the same thing, pattern overlay, and um, from here, I'm gonna completely just shift this to wherever I want because when this when this panel is made, it can be totally separate. To my knowledge, I'm not like a fucking complete expert when it comes to manufacturing these custom garments. But in my experience, I've been able to tell the manufacturer, like make sure that when you make this panel, this, you know, like Grim Reaper dude is like sitting right on the chest and they can do it. Like in my experience, any manufacturer I've worked with, um, you can get that specific. So I'm just moving this pattern around. Um, you know, I've got the pattern overlay um, effect clicked here or the style clicked here and I'm just moving the pattern around with my mouse. And so I can move that right there. If you want to get crazy, you can do it on, on the, um, the sleeves and the collar and all that, you know, just for the sake of this tutorial. Why not? Let's just see what that looks like. Double click the right sleeve, add the pattern, you know, maybe we shift it over a little bit. So there's more of like the flames on the sleeves or something, you know, um, just get, you know, creative with it. Left sleeve, get the pattern going there. Maybe it's like a different sort of flame with the bats. You know what, originally I just had it with the sleeves like black and I, I it looks like I actually used like a mauve, a mauve, yeah it is mauve, mauve color. Um, I like this, you know, now that I'm doing this again, I actually love the pattern everywhere. Um, I think that looks dope. Like maybe even the collar too. Let's see what that looks like. See what I'm saying? Like this is the, t this is what fucking makes like design fun is like, you can do one thing yesterday and you're like, Oh, that looks pretty dope. And then like, you're looking at your screen the day after and you're like, Oh no, this would be way cooler. You know what I mean? Like I fucking love that. So yeah, I mean, that sort of covers how you can create a seamless pattern, add it to your, um, you know, your mock-up. Um, do we want the buttons to be white? I don't know, maybe we make them like black. So there you go, black buttons, maybe they're yellow. Um, I'm gonna change the, um, the uh, blend mode here to multiply if we do like a lighter color. Maybe like red, yellow, I kinda like the yellow, I don't know. I don't know, whatever. But this is where you can just start messing around with stuff. And again, you can do the same thing I did before to the inside. Um, double click that layer, pattern overlay, you know, just kind of move it wherever. Doesn't really matter. And then just bring down the opacity so it looks a little bit more realistic, you know. So that or something. 7% shirt. Okay, so with these custom cut and sew garments, um, every manufacturer is going to have different requirements for the art that you send them. Um, in my experience, like for example, with this seamless pattern shirt, like I would literally just send them this pattern. I would say, hey, it's a seamless pattern. I'd send it probably as like a PDF so they could open it very easily with whatever software they're using. Um, but you know, again, they might say, uh, all right, we need it. Actually, we need it as a TIFF file or we need it as a PNG or whatever the case may be. So be prepared for that. Um, this tutorial is mostly about the process of just like mocking it up and everything like that. Cause it's hard for me to speak to the demands of every supplier that's out there. Um, I can just tell you that in my experience, it's worked. Uh, you know, just sending them the pattern and sending them, sending them sort of the realistic mock-ups has been totally fine. Um, and they're going to send a sample ideally anyways. So if something looks off, um, you'll be able to improve on it and fix it, um, before they actually manufacture the product. So, um, when it comes to, you know, designs like this, where there's just a photo being used for these different, you know, the sleeves and the panels and things like that. You just want to send as high resolution photo as possible along with the mock, um, you know, so you can say, like I was saying before, like, can you line it up so that the collar is this and the sleeve and, you know, and all the, uh, the specifics that you have. So just want to make sure I, I covered that. Um, lastly, what I want to show you is how you can take, you know, a stock image 
um, a copyright free photo and sort of manipulate it, edit it a bit to make it more interesting. Um, we're gonna use a very similar method to what we did here as far as adding the photo to the different panels, but this is like not copyright free. This is from, uh, you know, a very well-known movie um, that most people, unless you're Supreme apparently, um, you wouldn't have the rights to use. So I wanna show you how you can do it like with copyright free photos, right? So that you can make something dope for your brand or whatever the case may be. Um, I just went to pexels.com, I searched sad, um, and I found this image right away. I thought it was cool. I thought I could put her eye like right in the left, like chest area. That would look kind of cool. I thought that would be a good placement. So let's just use this photo. We'll click free download. Um, I'm going to sort of wipe all this out so that we start with a black, uh, blank slate. So let's get rid of, of this uh, other stuff here so that we're back to like square one. Just removing the pattern, getting rid of these belly photos that are still here. Um, right sleeve, okay. So now we're like back to square one, zoom in there. All right, so we'll grab this image that we downloaded, drag it to the Photoshop icon. Command A is gonna grab the whole thing. Command C to copy. Back over to our mockup. And we'll start with, um, you know, well, let's remove the collar and, and the inside and some of these other things so we can see what we're doing. Command V, right click, convert to smart object. Right click, create clipping mask. And we're just gonna size it down a bit. Not too much, honestly, because I want it to be like, kind of like a macro, not a macro photo, but you know, like a zoomed in photo. Okay, it's looking decent. I'm gonna change the blend mode to multiply. And then we can start messing around with command U, bring the, um, the hue and saturation box up, bring the saturation down to negative 100, click okay, we'll go image, brightness and contrast, click use legacy, I'm gonna bump up the contrast first, and then I'm gonna bring down the brightness a bit. I wanna just like make it a little bit more abstract so it's not just like a straight up photo, you know? That's looking kinda of cool. I still want people to be able to tell what it is. Um, from here, I think I'm going to go to filter, noise, add noise, and just add like a pretty decent amount of noise to this, maybe like 30% noise, and then image adjustments, brightness and contrast. Kind of same thing I was doing before, but now it's going to create more like, almost like spray painted um, vibes on this photo, which I think looks like pretty dope. So the problem now is that I can't really see like the shadows or like the details of the garment anymore. So I'm gonna reduce the opacity a bit. And then I'm gonna bring back this um, this shadow layer that's at the top and bump up the, um, the brightness and contrast on that. Or like bring down the brightness and, and bump up the contrast. So I can get more details of the shirt in there. So a little bit better, I can probably even go lower on this. There we go. I still want to, to pe for people to see that it's black, you know, but just like see more of the shirt underneath. All right, I mean, that's looking pretty dope. Um, I mean, we could add like a gradient map or something to this. We could mess around more with the color, even just like using like color eyes would work. You know, so we could like make it a little bit more interesting like that. That's kind of dope actually with that blue. That was a total accident. Should we use that? No, I kind of like that. All right, let's fucking roll with that. All right, cool. Sure, why not? All right, yeah, just click colorize on the hue and saturation box and messed around with it until it looked cool to me. Uh, welcome to uh, graphic design. So I'm cool with this image. Now I'm gonna start like doing it to the with the other panels like I did um, with the belly imagery. So Command J, bring this right panel back. 
right click, create clipping mask. I'm just gonna bump it down a little bit so it looks a little more organic and like it was printed. Uh, the inside, you know, we obviously don't want it this white color, so let's just do a color overlay of, um, you know, like dark, um, dark gray basically, right? But we want to blend in. Um, and it looks weird right now because the collar isn't showing. So that's interesting. That almost looks like a, like this would be dope as like a polo shirt. I don't know, it's the vibe I got right away. But let's make this um, collar. I mean, we could make it gray. I don't know, that's kind of interesting. I have a, man, I have a hard time with colors sometimes. Like, like, um, I feel like I always want to make the collar and like the sleeves either like black or um, like use the imagery from the other panels. I don't know. Um, let's see, right sleeve, left sleeve. Oh uh, man, I don't know. Oh, it's so tough. All right, let's use the same color as the collar here. Command C, we're gonna grab this hex value and then go to the left sleeve, color overlay, that same color, so everything matches. Same thing on the right. I mean, the buttons right now are white. We should probably change those to like, I don't know, maybe this like gray color. I mean, that kind of works, right? How does it look with the black? I kind of like it with a little bit of contrast with the gray. Okay, I mean, I feel like, you know, if I saw a brand who had a shirt like this, I'd be like, oh, that's pretty dope. Like, it's a lot more interesting than just the straight up stock photo, right? I mean, we definitely made some adjustments to it. And like, imagine like, I don't know, like a tag down here or some shit, like maybe your logo is integrated into the design or something. You know what I mean? Just like mess around with this shit and, um, you know, do something cool. But yeah, I feel like, my work here is sort of done. Um, I'll show you if I was going to, to now, like if this was the final product, this is what I wanted to do. I would make a new document and maybe make it like 30 by 30, like pretty sizable, 30 by 30 inches that is, right? And then go back and grab the image that I used here and just drag it onto this canvas and it's gonna have, you know, we're gonna turn off the, um, or change the blend mode to normal, bring the opacity to 100. And then I would just like bump it up like this, right? You could even probably just send the, the entire image actually with it not like cut off. That, that actually might be the smarter move. Um, but this would probably be fine. Like, let's look, whoops, let's look at, what's actually showing. Yeah, it's just like mostly hands and face, right? So I feel like this would probably do it even if you wanted to like bump it up to here. But um, like I was saying before, every supplier, every manufacturer is gonna probably ask for something different. So they might say like, nope, send the entire image. Don't cut anything off. Someone else might say, no, just send a square like this or you know, whatever the case may be. If they say send a vector, uh, find a new printer because this is, <laughs> there's no way this could be like vector and, and look anything like this. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for today. We created, I feel like we created some pretty, pretty dope shirts. Like, I don't know. I could see myself rocking some of these shirts. The show. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Shit, not bad from starting with a brick red, ugly uh, shirt. So that is it for today's video. I hope that you learned something. Um, you know, whether it's like you're trying to make actual products for your brand, you're just trying to come up with some new creative ideas, you can take everything that you learn in this video and apply it to whatever garments you know, that you're trying to make, whether it's fucking find a, a dope photo of a puffer jacket, change the colors, add some imagery, you know, fucking some, some shorts. You want to do a fucking, I don't know what you're into, denim, motorcycle jackets, Smurfs, windbreakers, you know, whatever. Um, go for it, get creative. 
and uh, make some dope shit. I think we're still at like a 70, 30, 80, 20 split. Most people who watch these videos are not subscribed, so I would appreciate it if you subscribed. If you like one of these videos, you're probably gonna like another one. So if you subscribe and you hit the bell notification, you'll know whenever I drop a new video. Hit the like button, share, be sure to comment below if you have a question, you wanna see something in a future video, um, whatever it is, that's what the comment section is for. Hit me up on Instagram, it's at fuller.moe if you have you know, other more specific questions that you think would be better suited to like a DM, if you need some feedback on designs that you did, you just wanna say what's up, whatever it is. If you haven't already checked out my brand, it's called Sense Overlord, I just dropped my first collection called Full Court Death um, last month. This is just one of the t-shirts from the collection. Check it out, senseoverlord.com. That is it for today's video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.